guys, what's happening? It is Wednesday, March 23rd. I'm trying this out on my new editing software. Uh, tried uh, Movie Magics 2016. Didn't like it at all. Glad it was on sale. Um, been tinkering around with Filmora, and I've seemed to like it a lot more. So we're going to check this out and see how it goes. Uh, up first, we're just going to stick to uh, Nintendo first, I guess. Uh, up first, I've got... Uh, Legend of Zelda H, uh, Twilight Princess HD for the Wii U. It comes with the Wolf Link Amiibo, which opens up the uh, Cave of Shadows, which is a new addition to the game. Really glad to get that. Up next, this was at uh, Dakota Boys Ranch, another chance thrift store. They've changed their name so many times now I can't keep track, but I got uh, Lego Lord of the Rings. It was $2.49 because it was on clearance. Really glad to get that. And I want to cover it up because I actually want to use the code, and I don't know if I'll be able to use the code But if I, if I show it. But uh, unlock, it's uh, newborn alerts in the game when you use that code. Really glad to get it. I've actually liked the Lord of the Rings Lego games. Um, not a huge Lego fan. My girlfriend absolutely loves them. I shouldn't say I'm not a huge Lego fan. I love the toys. Played with those thousands of hours when I was a kid and I, I can't think they were I think Lego was invented in 1947 I saw a t-shirt at a convention a few years ago that said backwards compatible since 1947 which made me laugh I thought that was pretty funny um, up next this was at uh, Goodwill picked this up for $2.99 brain boost beta wave uh, basically a brain age clone glad to get it uh, I'll tinker with it it's got some uh, looks like it's got some pick cross puzzles some match puzzles and some word puzzles um, and if I don't like it, oh well, it was $2.99. Um, picked up this. Walmart had it on clearance, $2.96. Uh, Disney's Epic Mickey, Power of Illusion. Glad to get it. Uh, looks like there's a lot of classic Disney stuff in here. Stuff from when I was a kid. Uh, stuff from when I was a kid to when my sister was growing up. So she's five years younger than me. So there's stuff in here that was cool to me when I was little. And stuff that was cool to her when she was little. So I'm glad to get this. Um... Up next, uh, Nintendo. Finally, uh, let's do a new release first. Uh, picked up this, uh, Pokemon Tournament. Really glad to get it. I'm, um, I'm excited to try it. I'm not a huge Pokemon fan, but uh, I watched the uh, Giant Bomb Quick Look and really enjoyed what I saw. It's uh, sort of a, a fighting brawler with Pokemon characters. And like I said, I don't know a ton about the Pokemon characters. So... Uh, Mr. Uh, Matt Stevens, uh, or as we used to call him at work because he's from Flint, Michigan, the Detroit Diesel. If you watch this video, maybe you can tell me uh, who I should play as and whatnot, but uh, glad to get this for the Wii U. Uh, then, Nintendo finally opened up the vault and released a new batch of Nintendo Selects, so I'm glad to get this. Uh, Amazon is doing something similar to the Gamers Club Unlocked in which you get... Uh, 20% off new releases. Best Buy does 20% off new games across the board. Amazon Prime does 20% off new releases. And I believe there's like a three-week window once it passes 21 days. Um, I, but I'm not certain on that. But anyway, picked up this. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I understand it's uh, got a uh, pretty severe level of difficulty, but I'm glad to get that. Then, uh, one, I've got to be honest, I am not keeping this for myself. This is going to get shipped off to my nephew, uh, Nolan, and my niece, Mackenzie, and my other nephew, Evan. I should have said nephews, Nolan and Evan, and my niece, Mackenzie. My sister will probably actually, my sister and brother-in-law will actually probably have more fun playing this than they will, but this is Super Mario All-Stars for the Wii. Uh, these were both 15 bucks a piece after the discount. Then, uh, over at Goodwill, this was just today, I went in there, um... I know this one isn't as hard to find as the other ones, but it was $3.99 at Goodwill. And it's a Hudson Soft game, so it's definitely going to become uh, scarcer and scarcer as the years roll on, so I'm glad to pick it up. Um, got still has a tape on it from there, but that is Decca Sports for the Wii. Like I said, going to be tougher and tougher to find. Picked up a handful of, well, one of them isn't. Uh, we'll get that one out of the way. Checked out Second Impressions, a thrift store in East Grand Forks. And to be honest with you, they didn't have much for video games, but I picked up uh, Living Color, the band, not in Living Color, the TV show, picked up their album with uh, Cult of Personality on it. Picked up Belle Biv DeVoe's Poison. You can laugh at me for that, but I absolutely fucking love that record. That, that, was, that cassette tape was on blast when I was in the sixth grade. Um, and then uh, Eric B. and Rockham, Don't Sweat the Technique. Uh, three really good records. They had a lot of really good R&B, soul, and hip-hop records from the late 80s into the early 90s, and they were all 99 cents a piece, so I grabbed the three that I wanted the most. Um, 
pick those up. Uh, and anyway, they had uh, all the all the games I picked up there were a buck. Two of them were for the uh, Xbox, uh, and that'll go into my original Xbox collection. I'm going to start uh, start cataloging catalog cataloging that and showing you guys what I have for Xbox um, across uh, Xbox. Uh, the original, the OG Xbox, and uh, 360, and then the One, uh, that is probably where my most concentrated, largest collection lies. Uh, my Xbox One is on right now, so if you hear it chirping at me in the background, I have Kinect hooked up to it, so it'll hear me say Xbox every once in a while and light up. And uh, for those of you who don't like your Kinect, I've never had any issues with mine. I walk into a room, say Xbox on, and it... Uh, it works, so I haven't had any problem with that. Uh, enough about that. This was a buck. Backyard baseball over at Second Impressions. Really cool, kind of cartoony, arcadey uh, baseball game. Uh, interestingly enough, A-Rod is on the cover, Alex Rodriguez. Also on the back, I see that uh, featured athletes on the back. Two out of the six of these would never be featured in a baseball game again. And that is, let's see if it'll focus. There we go. Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa. Those two guys will never be f featured in a game again. And... Uh, you know what, there's a lot of people who say Piazza was, was a juicer or a steroid user. I don't think he ever was. He never hit for power, but he was a terrific catcher. Um, and um, I can't remember, is he in the Hall of Fame? If he's not, it's a goddamn shame. But the other four guys should get into the Hall of Fame. Pedro, Jim Tomey, Ichiro, and Mike Piazza. Uh, speaking of which, Jim Tomey hit his 600th home run in a twin jersey. Up until that point, he was a Minnesota twin killer. Uh, absolutely broke our hearts every chance he got when he came up to bat. It seemed like every other hit against the Minnesota Twins was a goddamn home run. But uh, that's fine. He uh, he played uh, amazing baseball. It was fun to watch as a DH. You know, and towards the end of his career, he was just uh, just there for the just there for the bat, and that's fine. I mean, he still hit a 600th home run in a Twin jersey. I think there was only one other Twin to hit uh, 600 home runs, and that was uh, Harmon Killebrew. And he actually did it his whole career with the Twins, but uh, Jim Tomey still did it in a Twin jersey. That was pretty cool. <clears throat> Enough about that. These were also at another chance, and both were 50% uh, off. Uh, that is uh, Day of Reckoning. This is when WWE did exclusives to consoles, which all that kind of stuff always baffled me. This is the kind of game that should be available across all the platforms you want to sell to as many people as possible. Then WrestleMania 18. So these were a buck fifty a piece. I'm um, glad to get these because I kind of like going back to the old wrestling games and seeing the physics and seeing the characters. And, you know, <clears throat> as wrestling's progressed since I was a kid, you know, just big muscle-bound muscle, muscle -bound guys that didn't have a ton of mobility could become superstars. Like uh, like the one that comes to mind, uh, there was two guys, uh, Hercules Hernandez, who I believe has passed away now, so rest in peace, Hercules and... Uh, Don, Don the Rock Morocco. They were not necessarily any, any very compelling when it came to ring abilities, but uh, a different age in the 80s. If you could talk on the mic, you could get a career. Um, anyway, enough about wrestling. Uh, then last but not least, my buddy Aaron sent me a text, and it said, uh, you in on this? And I said, yeah, sure, and I bought it off of him for 30 bucks, and even at 30 it's a steal. Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes. I gotta say my... Uh, my GameCube collection is probably winding down. I'm only going to go after stuff that I really am looking for now. Um, there's not a ton, as I'm, I'm just kind of leaning over and looking at it. Uh, yeah, there's not a ton that I'm really looking for at this point. I got one of my favorites in Super Mario Strikers. I got Battalion Wars. I got all the Zelda games. Uh, F-Zero. F-Zero was a steal. I got that for $4 at a rummage sale. But anyway, <clears throat> and last but not least... Um, I don't know if you guys know about the series Dementium. Um, I don't even know who the developer was on that, but the Dementium 1 and 2 are two first-person uh, survival horror games, and Dementium is amazing, amazing. Very highly underrated on the Nintendo DS. How it ever ended up on the DS and not on the PSP or not as an arcade title on Xbox or PlayStation Network is beyond me, but that said, these guys also made another fantastic, fantastic game, and that is Moon. Um, it, this one is, uh, more akin to being set out in space and having to, uh, having to find your way through space and whatnot. It's, uh, got some really good 
really good tense moments in the game. I'm only about an hour in, but everything I've everything I've seen I've really liked. Um, it does suffer from that if you're playing on a 3DS. Fortunately, I have a 3DS and a DS, but I played it originally on my DS. It does suffer <clears throat> from excuse me from that screen stretch that will happen when using the uh, 3DS. But otherwise, so far, Moon has been amazing. I picked this up at Rock 30. I wasn't going to let it sit there. Flipped it over, knew nothing about it. The second I saw that it was uh, developed by Renegade Kid, that's it. They're the guys who created Dementium the Ward. Uh, Moon is amazing. And it uses something called the Renegade Engine. And it seems to squeeze as much power out of the DS as it can. Um, these guys were highly underrated, but they made three really good games. I'd like to know what happened to Renegade Kid. All right. Then uh, I've kind of kind of got it broken down by console slash ecosystem, if you will. Uh, PlayStation. Let's get the uh, let's get the newest stuff out of the way. For the PS4, <clears throat> Best Buy had this on sale for $19.99. Gamers Club Unlocked came to $15.99. $10 off coupon came to actually no, I had a $25 coupon. I got a couple of other things. So Assassin's Creed Chronicles was essentially free. Um, I'll be honest with you, I like these uh, two and a half dimension Assassin's Creeds significantly more than I like the regular Assassin's Creeds. Uh, that might be blasphemy, but maybe it's the fact that it's in bite-sized chunks and it's not so much about the open world and everything. Um, I'm trying to think. The, I don't know what the newest one is. Is it Russia or India? I can't remember. Um, or maybe even China. I can't remember what the newest one is, but I know the newest one out of this bunch is getting middling reviews, but I actually have enjoyed the other two. I wish I could remember which ones were which off the top of my head. Uh, picked up Tom Clancy's The Division. I already did a quick look, uh, early look at it on my Xbox One. Uh, I have it for both consoles, so Xbox One, I am Unseen Enemy, and PlayStation, I'm Big Angry Nate. So uh, if you see me on or uh, shoot me a friend invite, we could, I'd be glad to play. Uh, I've had a blast with it so far. Uh, my buddy, my buddies Mitch and Todd have really, really dug into it. They're f further along than I am. Then uh, another new release from Marvelous. Uh, enjoyed the uh, enjoyed. Uh, I believe it's called Senran Kagura Two Deep Crimson on the 3DS. Enjoyed that. Didn't play through it all the way yet, but uh, decided to pick this up. This is Senran Kagura Estival Versus. Uh, you know, kind of a skeezy game. Um, I didn't realize when I got Senran Kagura uh, Deep Crimson that this was going to be what it was, uh, very much along the lines of Onichan Bar Z2 Chaos. Uh, but the combat is super smooth, super slick. Um, really glad to get this. Then um, some uh, not new releases by any means. Uh, for the PS3, picked this up. I'd been back and forth at GameStop whether I should get this, but then... You redeemed one of my $5 off uh, gamer uh, power-up rewards, uh, so I picked this up. It was 8 bucks after that 5 bucks off uh, Prince of Persia trilogy. Been really into Prince of Persia lately. Don't know why, couldn't tell you. Absolutely love the Prince of Persia on the Sega Genesis. Um, here's one that is amazingly stupid fun. It is right up there with fairy tale fights. Not polished by any means, but it's got a lot of heart, a lot of charm. There's a lot to enjoy with this game. Super duper glad to get it, and that is Naughty Bear, the, gla the gold edition. This one's kind of, uh, I don't want to say uh, valuable in terms of rarity, but it's definitely uh, harder to find than the original one. The gold edition has all the DLC uh, chapters, and I believe new, co yep, new costumes, new weapons, new kills. Um, the gist of the game is, is that Naughty Bear himself was not invited to a party, and now he is going after his friends. Seems legit. All right, then uh, three PlayStation 2, really amazing PlayStation 2 games that I picked up. I have this on the Xbox, but I'm going to hang on to it on the PS2 just because he's my favorite superhero, and I absolutely love this game. Interestingly enough, he's gotten better video games than he's ever gotten movies. Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. This was two fifty. They were blowing out a bunch of games at another chance thrift store, so for $2.50, wasn't going to pass it up. This was an eBay pickup as I got to... Uh, talking to Jess over at uh, Rock 30 about this, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go back and find this. I owned this at one time, should have never gotten rid of it, so I had to track it down on eBay, and this one's certainly getting uh, harder to find. It's from From Software, so, so you know it's uh, going to be, at the very least, weird, and that is Adventure of Cookie and Cream. Interesting thing about this game, you can play it in co-op using the same controller, so it's... Uh, 
it's a lot of fun um this sort of uh this sort of kicked off the uh this this is one of those games that reminds me of uh, like brothers where you had to work together but you have to switch between characters and use the same i think uh in brothers as well as this one you use use different parts of the controller to control both characters and then last but not least as i said this was a from software title so definitely quirky and odd published by age tech uh last but not least for the ps2 walked into rock 30 uh Normally, I check that place out about once a week, mainly to look for original Xbox stuff that I don't have, but there was one sitting on the shelf that I was absolutely not going to pass up. Uh, this is one of my favorite, uh, favorite, this is probably in my top 10 on the PS2, absolutely amazing air combat game. Um, there's literally, I've played nothing, I can safely say I've played nothing like that, like this at all, and, uh... It's an Atlas game, so it's it's definitely harder to find. Pick this up for twenty five bucks. Sky Gunner, absolutely amazing game. It's got, um, it's got a cartoony vibe to it. I don't want to say it's a uh, cell shaded because it's definitely not, but it's got a really cartoony vibe. Really looks sharp to this day. But this is a uh, man. This is a gem on the PS2. If you've got a chance to track this down, you find it at a rummage sale on the cheap or a thrift store on the cheap. Grab it up just man just to play it one time is well worth it um all right then there was a ton of 360 stuff i picked up uh, i'll do one newish release it's been out for a while best buy had this on sale this week for 39 20 uh 20 percent off comes down to 32 had another 10 dollars off coupon so i got grabbed up this uh plants vs zombie garden warfare 2 i didn't play part one because i saw that it was pretty much multiplayer only but i've seen there's a lot of single player content in this so i'm glad i'll i'm glad to get it uh, i'll probably jump in with some co-op and uh co-op and online stuff just to see what it's like but uh yeah just want to give it a whirl see see uh see what it's like i'll definitely play through the single player content and i didn't know this but they are apparently doing 20 percent off all games at best buy now whether they're new or used because alan wake as you can see was 9.99 rang up as nine dollars or eight dollars i take that back um so i'm glad to get that i had alan wake digitally but uh when i say i had it i have for the life of me no idea what i did with the code i don't even know if i ever redeemed it if i did it would be in my history but it's possible that i that i just uh did not have it uh i got it on a card so it wasn't like i uh wasn't like something i purchased where i could just reinstall the purchase um so that was uh alan wake then one pickup over at Rock 30. I was there today as well because it's trade bonus week and I made a haul there d debating on what I'm going to do with the uh, $217 to spend at Rock 30. I might wait for another rewards day or I might get a, to be honest, I might, if they have one in stock, I might get a second uh, PS4, a used one. Don't really need a new one. Um, Battle Fantasia, 2D Fighter. I've played this before. I'm not really good at this, um, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Has a really again stunning art style. It's from Axis and Arc System Works, so it's a you know it's one of those bizarre and odd fighting games. Uh, picked up as I said, kind of trying to collect the Disney run now. Ratatouille for the Xbox 360. Uh, haven't played any of it yet, but if it's half as good as Brave, I'll be super super duper. Uh, uh, happy with that then um i don't see this out there a ton and i looked it up it doesn't go for very much but it doesn't have a ton of sales either and i've got to imagine that's just because of the sport it is not because of the game because i remember this got really good game really good reviews and that is smash court tennis uh three for the xbox 360 uh atari did i i don't i can't remember i think atari published this in namco or bandai namco at the time now um, I believe they developed it. I, or I could be wrong, but um, yeah, this uh, just straight up tennis game, pretty much a simulation tennis game. Glad to get that. Um, here's one that I don't see a ton either. It's an Activision game with, uh, with uh, these movie games that Activision published and developed. You don't see them out there a ton, and I got to imagine that has to do with licensing stuff. Um, I don't know if this is one of the ones. There's a handful of these that never came with manuals, but I, if it did, I'll track one down. Or if it does come with a manual, I'll have to track one down. And that is DreamWorks How to Train Your Dragon. Watched a little bit of video on this. Looked fairly impressive. Um, 
Here's another one that I do this compilation. I don't see out there a ton, and one of my favorite games is on there. That is uh, Cubed, Luminous Live, and it's Every Extend Extra Extreme, or E4. But the big one for me is right there, Res HD. Absolutely love this. Don't I Like I said, I don't see this compilation out there a ton, but it's not particularly expensive. When you do find it, it was four bucks. Um, here's one that's... Uh, I think it's maintaining its value because people are excited for the sequel that's coming out, although Microsoft has all but disavowed this one just because it's not a bad game in in terms of gameplay and mechanics, but it's literally the same as the first game, but with zombies, and that is Crackdown 2. I'm actually super duper. Uh, Crackdown 1 came out the summer after I had my gastric bypass, and it had the Halo 3 multiplayer beta on it, which certainly drove sales but then it turned out that the game that it was packed in with was actually a lot of fun so i'm glad to get cracked down too i played a little bit of it either on a demo or a rental and like i said i wasn't disappointed but i wasn't impressed either and you know what i play a ton of shitty games so you don't have to impress me i think in my case it either has to be really fucking good or really really bad this if it's neither i I'm just kind of meh it's there's nothing memorable about it uh, picked up Vanquish for the 360. Uh, glad to get that. Another Disney game. Uh, di up. This one um, looks like uh, fairly like uh, very much like Adventure of Cooking Cream. You got to use both characters and whatnot. The, the co control mechanics obviously aren't as stiff or aren't as or aren't as uh, esoteric, I should say, as as uh, Adventure of Cooking and Cream. But uh, glad to get that. Another Disney pickup. Bolt. All these are getting tougher to find, so I'm glad to just add these to the collection in general. Need for Speed The Run. Um, this is the one that intrigues me the most because it's the most Cannonball Run-esque of, the, of them. Uh, if you don't know what Cannonball Run-esque is, uh, look it up on Wikipedia, or I'm sure there's somebody who's pirated something on YouTube. Just look it up there. Uh, NBA Live 08. I see that this one is getting tougher to find, but it's not particularly valuable. This was a Goodwill pickup for $3.99. Um, then, this is a new sealed in box, uh, King of Fighters 13. As you can see, it's got the Peggy 12, which means it's a European version. However, this version is region free, so I'm glad to get it. It's from Rising Star. Uh, they put out a ton of shooters. Uh, really glad to get it. This is the deluxe version. It contains a reversible art sleeve, uh, poster, mini poster, plus a moves list, and an art CD. So I'm actually super glad to get that. All right. And then one that absolutely caught me off guard. I watched a video on it, and I was like, this is right in my wheelhouse. Isometric, hack and slasher, DreamWorks Rise of, Rise of the Guardians. Now, the Wii version... Uh, you know, eight to ten dollars used. The PS3 version, six to eight bucks used. This guy for the Xbox 360 must be very tough to find, because, or got a low print run, because even a used copy still fetches eighteen to twenty dollars. And I see new copies are still going for original price, fifty to sixty bucks. Glad to get it. I've already played through the first world level, whatever you want to call it. The the worlds are broken into sub levels and whatnot. I uh, had a blast with it so far. Um, I, I'm actually intrigued enough after I played through the first level to actually watch the Rise of the Guardians movie just because uh, it seems pretty cool. The story is is that these are the guardians of dreams and uh, these are the guardians of kids' dreams and fairy tales and make-believe. So you've got... Uh, the rabbit is obviously supposed to be Peter Cottontail. The guy that's called North is supposed to be a Russian Santa Claus. There's a Jack Frost. And I don't know the other two characters, to be honest with you, but they guard children's dreams. And you're fighting um, Pitch, who uh, who is stealing dreams and forcing kids into an early reality. It's, it's sort of like that. Um, Sort of a sort of a modern day take, I guess, on Peter Pan not wanting kids to grow up too fast. I guess I never even thought of that until now. Here's one that I picked up at Thrift for three bucks. Definitely getting tougher to find, and that's Fusion Frenzy Two. Um, it's mainly it's getting tougher to find because Hudson did it, and they no longer exist. Uh, they exist only under the Konami banner. Here was another Thrift find, uh, Spiderwick Chronicles. I was told by uh, Lance over at our GameStop here in Grand Forks that this is actually a fairly good game, so I'm glad to get that. This was a GameStop pickup for for five fifty nine or five ninety nine. 
NFL tour. I used to absolutely watch. I used to absolutely, uh, you know, I never missed a Minnesota Vikings game, despite the fact, despite their futility. Um, but I've, it's really not exciting to me anymore. Um, but these uh, NFL Blitz series is one of my favorite uh, arcadey sports games, so I'm glad to get that. Then a slightly stupid shooter, Blackwater. I always thought this was Connect only, but I see it's better with Connect, which means that it plays with a controller. And I'm really looking forward to this because, man, oh man, is this fucking dumb. You had to have a lot of balls to name a game after Blackwater because there was already enough controversy surrounding these guys as a private military corporation. And let's see, when did this get published? It came out after the Connect, which I mean, which I believe puts it at 2000. 2010 ish I can't remember but there was already enough controversy around this company so to still put out a game based on this company for the connect is kind of ballsy I'll give them that uh, you got brass ones 505 games and then last but not least out of the 360 uh, pinball Hall of Fame the Williams collection um, absolutely loved pinball when I was a kid I wish we had an, an arcade locally that had that was devoted just to pinball I would be all over it all right that is almost the end of it, except for my buddy Totter uh, has been too good to me when he, uh, unfortunately, his mother passed away recently, and uh, and they're cleaning out her house, and he's finding a lot of stuff from when he was a kid. So first up, he just gave me this Final Fantasy IX. Not a huge Final Fantasy uh, fan by any means, but I'm going to hang on to it. Just It was given to me as a gift. Yeah, one thing you got to know about my buddy Todd, uh, everything he has is pristine, like the books in here are still stiff the discs look like they're brand new aside from shelfware right here even this case looks immaculate okay so totter said i have a few other things for you handed me a mega drive this is just a box um there's nothing in here but the box this is just a cool piece of uh sort of history that i can preserve then another box only but super worth it because of the colors the box for the Super Famicom. My buddy Todd, way back in the day in EGM, you could import, uh, you could import uh, systems. You'd have to, you know, money order, COD order. I don't even know if they do COD orders anymore. But back then, you'd you'd have to import this stuff, and Todd would do it. He was uh, he was the hardest of the hardcore when it came to gaming back in the day. Um, and although he's never played it, one of the few people I know could. Uh, sleepwalk his way through a dark souls game he is he is very very good and very patient at punishingly brutal video games then there are two things that are complete in box and both of them are going to blow your mind mega cd complete in box and i have a genesis one to run this super glad to get this this stuff wasn't region locked back in the day but it's complete in box um box has got a little bit of wear on it i will open it up just to show it to you in case you guys don't believe me but uh as i said complete in box there it is there's the uh plate that goes with it and then he found this while it was in there so i guess he threw this in as well double dragon for the master system um i don't have a master system i do have a genesis one so i might track down a power base converter for some of these, uh, I wish the power base converters worked with the Retrons. That would be great. I don't know that they don't in terms of uh, in terms of uh, software functionality, but the power base converter had a really weird shape to it, so I don't know. My buddy Todd did tell me that the drive on this sticks, but I've got to imagine at this point I will be able to find. You know, what, I'm not going to box this back up right now. I will be able to find a tutorial on how to fix these. Um, if not, I'll see if someone locally can do it. Then, last but not least, complete in box. And as I said, my buddy Todd takes immaculate care of his games, of his consoles. This has the manual, the plastic wrap, the styrofoam, the controllers, the entire works. Neo Geo CD, complete in box. This is a really badass donation, I should say, to the channel. Totter, you outdid yourself on this one. I would have gladly paid him for it, but he knows that I collect. He knows that I'm still like a little kid. I still get that sense of wonder and enjoyment out of picking up video games. Um, and he gave me the one game. He only had one game for it, but I'm super glad to get that as well. 
Magician Lord. So, Totter, you outdid yourself. Very, very massive haul over the past few weeks. Um, hope you guys are enjoying my channel. I've got a bit of an announcement to make. I'm not going to make it on this video. I'll make it as just a solo standalone video. Um, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.